Good afternoon, young people of South Atlantic Conference. It's a privilege that you all are joining us today. Welcome to our current events and hot topics roundtable. It's a privilege to be here with you again at our South Atlantic Conference Youth and Young Adult Virtual Camp Meeting. What a week we have had. Uh, God has blessed us in a special way. And we've had a lot of fun this week and a lot of great information as we have talked about things here in the current events and hot topics round table. Uh, once again, I am Dr. Donovan Washington, the proud youth director of the South Atlantic Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. I want to thank you all uh, for letting me serve you these past six years. It's been nothing but joy. And I want to thank you all for gathering with us here today. Uh, Claudette McKenzie, thank you for joining us and, and welcome uh, to our round table on today. And many others will be joining us soon. We need you to do us a favor. If you are on Facebook, <coughs> excuse me, if you're on Facebook, could you please share this to your page? Uh, I would appreciate it. And if you're watching us on YouTube, copy the link, pass it on to someone and share it as well. Uh, we will be honored, honored to join you. Uh, don't hesitate to put your name in the chat. Give a shout out to your church. Let us know where you're from. Say hello uh, so we can greet you. And as we go over our topics today, we really, really want to hear from you. Don't get Remember, we have our icebreakers that we have enjoyed all week long. And then we have our main topic that we would love to hear from you about. Frederick McLean, welcome from the great Emmanuel Temple Church in Durham, North Carolina. Peggy Roy, good looking out today. Thank you for hooking us up, one of our panelists, and good afternoon to you. Rosemary Graham, howdy. It's good seeing you, my sister. I speak favor over your life for the housing situation. I hope it works out. I'm really happy about that. Sister Wheeler, we welcome you as well from the Abney Chapel. Uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And good afternoon once again, Brother McLean, who supports all of South Atlantic's ministries, promotes them on social media. We really, really appreciate you. More and more people are coming in, and we're grateful to have you today. Don't forget, share your page. Let everybody know that we are getting started today, and we welcome you uh, to our services. Now, before I introduce the panel today, I want to take some time to share a video with you from the great Oakwood University. Uh, I am an alumnus of Oakwood, class of 2000. I, I personally believe you got like Yale and Duke University and Harvard, and you got Oakwood up here. Okay, that's where Oakwood is. So if you go to Yale, or if you go to Duke, or if you go to North Carolina Chapel Hill, or if you go to Princeton uh, or Brown, you're down here. If you go to Oakwood, that puts you about right here, okay? That's where Oakwood is. And I want you all to know that I think Oakwood's a wonderful place. So let me share, share this video with y'all from Oakwood University. And I think you'll be impressed with what Oakwood has to offer. They contacted me recently. It said, Pastor Washington, can you share a little bit about Oakwood? And I said, I would be glad to. Let's enjoy this video. This is Oakwood University, a place where we put God first. Founded to provide the gift of knowledge and love to a world in need. Come study the world's troubles and solve them, like Dr. Milton Brown, who discovered healing medicines. Students come from across the country, from around the world, who want to enter to learn and depart to serve. Spend your years traveling around the world. We said we are leaders, so we lead. We stand out. We hear something is impossible, and we do it anyway. Everything we do, we do it as a team. Together, everyone achieves more. Together, the team accomplishes great feats beyond what any one person could do.
experience Oakland on you. The Oaks, Oakland University. After 120 years, we can never forget why we're here. We enter to learn and depart to serve. To put God first, that is our way forward. Success is in our roots. Come to Oakwood. Come. Come create and calculate. Shatter both records and social norms. Build improbable technologies and impossible futures. Unleash masterpieces and birth dreams. Come because there's much to be done out there and to be undone. Come find out everything of which you are capable. Come believe in someone greater than yourself. An experience unlike any other awaits you here. Here is a place where your dreams can call home. Creative ideas await your strength. Come answer this call. Join this family of believers and achievers. Put your grand imagination to work. Come let your vision rattle these walls and help move the world forward. Come to Oakwood. All right, come to Oakwood. I encourage all of our high school students to give Oakwood a look. I've heard people say two things about Oakwood. Uh, Pastor, I can't afford it. There are scholarships available for you to go to Oakwood University. Pastor, there's no diversity. It's just black people. That's not true. There are people from all uh, races there, but black people are a diverse group too. When I went to Oakwood, it was my first time meeting people who had lived in, who lived in Canada and England and the islands. And it gave me an opportunity to travel to those places and learn different cultures because black people are the most diverse people in the world. So we want to encourage you, give Oakwood a look and give Oakwood a try. Well, let's go ahead and get started today. And first I want to introduce my guest. Uh, the first guest is no stranger to you. Uh, this is the administrative secretary of the South Atlantic Conference Youth Ministries uh, Department, has been serving the South Atlantic Conference for a long time. Today, we welcome Sister Teresa Harrison. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Pleasure so, to be here with you today. We're so happy to have you uh, here with us. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself, Sister Harrison. Just give pe people a little brief bio about okay. you. All right. Well, I'm Teresa Harrison. I've been working at the South Atlantic Conference in several departments. I work with the youth department. I'm with the Sabbath school department, children's ministries, as well as community service, personal ministries, and prison ministries. So I carry a heavy load here, but I love it. I enjoy it. I've done it for quite a long time and I still love it as if it was the first day. So welcome to our program today and we hope you enjoy it. And I appreciate her. We've been working together for six years now and she is indeed the best of the best. Thank you, Teresa. Good afternoon to you. And then I got another friend here with us today. Uh, one of the bright young kings of South Atlantic Conference. Uh, hailing from North Carolina, Fayetteville to be exact, we have here with us Garrick Dixon. Brother Dixon, what is going on? Welcome. Good morning. Why don't you take some time to share a little bit about yourself, tell people what you're doing there in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and give them a little view of who you are. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, like you said, I'm Garrick. I go to Abney Chapel. I'm 16, going into my junior year of high school. And love basketball. Uh, don't really like school, but I do enough to get by. And yeah, thank you for having me. Man, we appreciate having you. Now, let's go ahead and, and let people know the monumental thing you have been participating in today. Before this, where did you just come from, brother? The bed? <laughs> no, you said something. You're getting your license, man. Come on. Oh, oh uh, yeah, driver's ed. I did this. Driver's, driver's ed. He's in the process of getting his license, Streets of Fayetteville. You better watch out. You better watch out because he is on the way to be on the streets. I think he's on his way to getting a Hellcat. It's like every young man in Fayetteville drives a, a Hellcat because that military base there. And it looks like he's going to have one soon. 
as well. Let's see who joined us uh, since I last looked in the uh, chats. Want to make sure we greet everyone who's here with us. Virginia Brown, welcome today. Thank you for hearing and joining us. All right. Ortrine Gordon. Ortrine Gordon. Listen, Ortrine, after all the retirements, you're the number one star in the office now. Okay. You're the boss. <laughs> okay. So it looks like you run the show. Ortrine says, I want to hear what our young people have to say. Decatur all the way. Giving a shout out to Decatur. Sister Smith from Marion, South Carolina. Welcome. Welcome. Sister Hendricks from uh, Savannah. Welcome. I saw some pictures today of Savannah uh, getting renovated, uh, for Rayma getting renovated. And I know y'all are excited about Rayma getting renovated. Oh, my heart is touched. Rosemary Blevins, uh, welcome you today. Rosemary is an elder down there at the Shiloh Church in Charleston, South Carolina. One of my former members, beloved members. Uh, she said yesterday, uh, Oh, we yesterday we talked about what black kids are afraid of. And she said that she was afraid of the witch and the Wizard of Oz. You know what? Me too. Me too. Me too. I was I hated watching the Wizards of Oz. I was scared of the uh Oompa Loompas too. What was that? Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? I was afraid I was afraid of the Oompa Loompas too. Black kids have a special kind of fear, but we're happy to have you today, Sister Blevins. That's the new bill. Hope you got that car fixed, bruh. Oakwood alumnus two times, two times. He says watching from Indian Trail, North Carolina. Man, thanks for thanks for watching. Past the new bill, we really appreciate you there. Uh, look at Peggy giving some love to Garrick. She loves you like you, her son. Hey, Jasmine Jones. Hold on, let me go back up. So many people are joining us, and we don't want to miss everybody. Jasmine Jones. Hey, what's going on, Garrick? You real popular? It seems like you're the heartbreak kid. Look at this. All these girls. Hello, Danita not Roy. Not surprised. Hey, <laughs> Gamal Alexander. That's a blast from the past, ain't it? Ain't it, Teresa? What's up, Gamal? Yeah, Gamal. Newly married, Gamal Alexander. That's right. Newly married. Love the pictures, brother. Love the pictures. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Monty talking junk about Garrett, talking about the streets of Fayetteville. Don't let Monty talk about your streets like that, Garrett. <laughs> Don't let it do that. Good evening, <laughs> Sister Charity. Good evening. Thank you for joining us on YouTube. Uh-oh, Quenisha Hicks is back representing the E.S. Portis Youth Federation. Sister Melba has been with us every day. Thank you for joining us from Springfield. Richard Watkins, what's up with them Cowboys? How about them Cowboys, man? Welcome from Augusta, <laughs> Ebenezer. Garrick has some Cowboy slander that he didn't say, okay? Uh, welcome, welcome, Rosemary again. And uh, who else do we have? Richard. Let's see what Dwayne says. Dwayne, yeah, she's the best. Rayma alumni. I, I believe it. And Nicole, welcome to you. Now, we greeted everybody. I love that the comments are coming in. Uh, keep them coming because it's time for the popular, for the exciting, for the laugh-inducing icebreaker every day we've had an awesome icebreaker this has been the most popular segment at our round table and now it's time for the icebreaker today you know i was thinking with a holiday and july 4th coming up i said to myself what are the top five holidays the top five holidays among us and you know what i have come up with a definitive list, okay? A definitive list. I think my list is impeccable. I don't think you can argue with it that much, okay? But y'all let me know if my top five list of holidays matches up with yours. Now, before I reveal my list, I'm gonna give an honorable mention. An honorable mention coming in at number six is your birthday, okay? All right, your birthday didn't make the list. And the older you get, the less fun you have on your birthdays. When you're a kid, you got a cake, uh, you got some ice cream, you got a bunch of presents, you went to Chuck E. Cheese, unless you were a black kid and afraid of that. Uh, but <laughs> your birthday isn't as special the older you get. Now, for me, it is. I love turning an older age. But honorable mention for top five holidays is your birthday. But let's reveal Pastor Washington's top five holidays. 
Here we go. Here we go. All right. Top five holidays. Now, I, I was trying to be bold with it, but I wanted to put Father's Day number one. Okay. Because I think that's the best holiday in the world. Okay. <laughs> Can I get a witness, somebody out there? But I wanted to put Father's Day number one. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. But I think my list is pretty, pretty, pretty good. I really do. Let's go over it. Coming in number five is Father's Day. Uh, my favorite holiday, to be honest with you. Father's Day is a day that celebrates the people who make the world go round. Fathers. <laughs> Father's Day <laughs> celebrates what would this world be without fathers? Number four, I got New Year's Day slash Eve. I love that day off. I love staying up and watching the ball drop. I love bringing in the new year when the sun sets because we are Seventh-day Adventists. So I love New Year's Day, New Year's Eve. Then you got Labor Day. Now, you may say Labor Day. Why Why you like Labor Day? Listen, there's nothing like a day off in September, okay? And I love Labor Day weekend. That is a great day off. Watch some sports. Enjoy yourself. The top two I don't think many people will argue with. I got Thanksgiving. Who can, who can argue with Thanksgiving? And then you got Christmas. Christmas is special. Our, our Savior was born on that day. It's a special time. So I'm going to go to our panelists right now. And uh, let me see who's going to argue with me the worst. Let's start with Teresa Harrison. Teresa Harrison, what do you think about the top five list? Do you have any additions, subtractions? What holiday would make? I got a good, I can read your mind. I got a good idea oh, what I'm holiday glad. you're going to say. All right. <laughs> but let's see your list. And let's hear what you think of mine. Go ahead. You left off Mother's Day. Ah, uh, boo, boo, boo. <laughs> <laughs> they make the world go round. Is that right? Is that right? So if where would you put it? If you mother, you would not be here. How well, about that? <laughs> well, well, I can make the same argument for, but hey, 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 unless you marry Jesus' mama, I can make the same argument. <laughs> but, but where would you put Mother's Day on this list? I would put Mother's Day, I guess, at top, the top three. And what would you take off? Uh, Labor Day. Ah, oh, boo. <laughs> boo. Okay. Good insight. Good insight. Garrett, break down the list. Let's get your opinion. Now, listen, me and you played some games together not long ago, so I know you got a good mind on you. Let's hear what you have to say about this list. Hey, me personally. I'm putting my birthday at three. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would have to throw MLK Day in there because everyone loves a day off of school. What'd you say? I said I would have to throw MLK Day in there because everybody loves a day off of school. Ooh, MLK Day. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I can't. Wow. Wow. I can't argue with that. No, you can't. Right. MLK <laughs> yeah. Day. Maybe I should have put MLK Day. <laughs> I seem like old sellout not having MLK Day on here. <laughs> just, just a little bit. It's okay though. So, what would you take off for those days? Uh, Labor Day for sure. And actually, no, I'll keep Labor Day because I, I stay off of school. <laughs> New, New Year's Eve, I'll, t I'll take four and five off. New Year's Eve and Father's Day. Yeah. Wow, Father's Day gets no love, no love. love I don't dad. know why Father's Day doesn't get any love. All right, let's go to the chat. Let's see what everybody has to say. Sister Hendrick says Christmas. No debate with Christmas. I think that's the undisputed winner. Okay. Uh, Brother Hendrick says, You about to make these mothers jump you. Listen, bring it on, mothers. Bring it <laughs> on. Okay. I'm not, I'm never scared. Never scared. All right. So you let me know. Pastor Newbill is laughing at my list. All right. Let's see what uh, Elder Watkins has to say. He says, Thanksgiving, Christmas. Independence Day, Labor Day, and New Year. Listen, listen. The only difference in his mind, oh, you just sold all the fathers out too. Uh, and Richard the mothers. Watkins. You <laughs> took Father's Day off and put 4th of July. Let me say this, uh, Brother Watkins. 4th of July is the colonizer holiday. <laughs> we we replaced that with Juneteenth, brother. All right. <laughs> Let's see what Danita Roy has to say. Juneteenth, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, Christmas. So, so what you're saying, Danita, is you like to eat. That's what you're saying, okay? <laughs> Sister Melba says, 
I'm a rebel when it comes to holidays. Every birthday is a new year. I wish folks happy new year. Mother's days are each of your children's birthdays. Hmm. That's an interesting way to look at it. But Father's Day is definitely still better. Father's Day is definitely so. Oh, the chats are blowing up with people talking about this. And I don't want to hear nothing from the mothers. I don't want to hear nothing. Absolutely nothing from the mothers. Oh, and here comes a mother right now. Shayla Parker. Memorial Day over Labor Day and Mother's Day over Father's Day. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. What do you think about that, Teresa? <laughs> Absolutely. Listen, Garrick, do you agree that Father's Day shouldn't be on this list? Uh, as a future father myself, it it it's just it can stay. Listen, there's some good in you, man. I, I still love my mom, you. though. I still love my mom. <laughs> Listen, I love my mom too. <laughs> Father's Day is just better. Yes, Peggy, we need Father's Day. We need we Father's Day. We do. Okay, let's see what Monty has to say. Christmas, Thanksgiving, Parental Day. Oh, that's him cheating putting Father's Day and Mother's Day together. All right. And then Juneteenth. I like the Juneteenth. I definitely agree with that. Tony Calise, let's see what you have to say. Thanksgiving and Christmas. They agree. Thanksgiving one week off, Christmas two weeks off. And okay, I agree. I'm okay that third Monday. Now, Thanksgiving and Christmas are beautiful because you get a lot of time off. She's speaking like an educator. As an educator, you get all that time off and you definitely enjoy it. Thank you, Richard Watkins, for coming around Juneteenth. Then Deborah O'Neill said, I'll add Valentine's Day. Listen, Deborah, you can go on with that Valentine's Day stuff, okay? Valentine's Day is a sad day. I ain't never got a lit gift in my life on Valentine's Day. What I get on Valentine's Day is broke, okay? <laughs> uh, I agree. She says, I don't think my hubby likes that one too much. Now, Garrett, you, you're a young, strapping man. Tell me about Valentine's Day, player, player. Tell me all about it. Uh, Valentine's Day. I don't like it either. I don't think like I feel it's it's every day in reality. So oh, uh, oh, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so how many people are you giving gifts and hugs and no, kisses? Okay, and no, no, every it's day. Just right <laughs> he said, he said, hey, Valentine's Day is every day. It's, well, it's to true. who? It's just one person. It's just one person. Okay. But okay. I don't like the 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 one day I have to go all out, spend all this money. I mean, I don't have any money to spend, but you know, if I did have money, I wouldn't I wouldn't like to have to spend it all. Just okay. Okay. Rosemary Blevins says Christmas, Thanksgiving, uh, that alternate to Father's Day, Juneteenth, and personal vacation days. Hey, I'll put that on honorable mention. Ain't nothing like a personal vacation day. No time off for the halls homeschoolers, but my kids love participating with the public schools on MLK observers. MLK is a special day. That, listen, uh, South Atlantic Conference, I made an omission. MLK should have been on my list over Labor Day, okay? Over Labor Day. I don't say I'm wrong often, but I'll say I'm wrong there, okay? Valentine's Day is also my birthday. I feel sad for you, Sister O'Neill. I feel sad for you. Because you don't get to split those gifts up. Your husband does double duty on that day. All right. So there you go. There you go. There you go. Uh, the top five best holidays got a good response. But I'm, I'll am i only make one change to my list. And that's the Labor Day. I'll take Labor Day off, put MLK on there. And I'm going to make another change. I'll put Christmas at number five and Father's Day at number one, all right? Father's Day at number one. Oh, don't don't say nothing, Teresa Harrison. That is, let me go to Moses. So let it be written, so let it be done, okay? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we had fun with that icebreaker, y'all. We had a lot of fun with that icebreaker. Thank you all for participating in the icebreaker. Oh, Derwood Clark added something, though. He added something. Yeah, anniversary. You're right. I'm a married man. Anniversary has to be honorable mention. Honorable mention. Okay. Uh yeah. Married man. You're right. You're right. What did uh he say? We got it noted on June 30th, 2022. Dr. Washington was wrong. Yes, you better uh mark that in the history books, Monty. 
because I'm not wrong often, okay, as the most interesting man in the world, okay? Great discussion. You're right, Peggy. We had a lot of fun with that. All right, let's get to our main topic today. I enjoyed the icebreaker, and let's get to our main topic today. Today, we're going to just spend a little bit of time uh, talking about generations. In our church, our church is in the midst of transition right now. Um, people who have led the church for 30, 40, 50 years are now moving off the scene. And people who used to be our babies are graduating from high school, entering college and entering the workforce. And so you have a lot of generational dynamics that are taking place uh, in the church. Let me illustrate to you by breaking down what generations actually are. OK, let's break this down for a minute. A lot of these terms are thrown around, but we really don't know what they mean. For example, for example, when you look at young people, the oldest quote unquote young people right now is Generation X. Um, I happen to fall in Generation X. Now, right above us, if you are 57 years old or older, you are called a baby boomer, a baby boomer. Most of you are born right after World War II, and you're a baby boomer. But Generation X, the oldest members of Generation X are 57 years old now, all right? And the youngest members of Generation X are about 43 years old. Uh, so Gen Xers aren't kids no more. They're firmly in the middle age. I'm 44 years old, and so I am a, on the young end of Generation X. Now, the church often talks about millennials. They say millennials. These are individuals who were born between 1980 and 1995. Did you know the oldest millennials now are 42 years old? We're talking about, we got to focus on millennials. We got grandparent millennials now. All right, we got millennials that run your business. We got millennials that are firmly middle-aged, okay? And so, you know, and the youngest millennials were born in 1995. We have no, if I'm doing the math right, there are no teenage millennials anymore. None. So we got that categorized wrong sometimes. Mm -hmm. So the next generation that we rarely talk about is Generation Z. Generation Z. Now, these people are 26 years old and down. OK, so the oldest members of Generation Z are 26. They were born between 1996 and 2009. OK, uh, just to show how old I am, I graduated from high school in 1996. And then we have the alpha generation. Both of my children fall in the alpha generation. And this is if you were born in 2010 and under uh, my daughter, Taryn, was born in 2009, and she's a member of the Alpha Generation. And Tegan is about to turn nine years old, and both of them there. These are 12 years old and under. That's the generational breakdown. Garrick, when you see this generational breakdown, what comes to your mind instantly? What's your instant reaction to this? Uh, I'm, I'm a little surprised by how old some of the generations are. But yeah. I, I didn't know that, like, because I'm this is my first time seeing all of them like sp spread out like that, so it's, it's a little surprising. Yeah, I think it catches a lot of people by surprise, because when we say millennials, I think people think we're talking about teenagers, yeah, or or young kids, and all the millennials are grown. You have forty two year old millennials now, okay, they're all grown. Sister Harrison, when you see this breakdown. What's your initial reaction? Um, it's kind of surprising because I did not know. Like you said, life goes by so fast that it's almost like yesterday you were hearing about the millennials, millennials for the first time. And now they're already the oldest member is 42 years old. Isn't that crazy? I, that's amazing. And of course, we know. This is my first time seeing a name for the Alpha Generation, uh, and their their oldest member is already twelve years old. 
so life is just going so fast and we're constantly adding these new generations and it's just um it's just amazing to see it right here all there to let you know that this time has come so fast where these generations that you thought were so young now they're already old members um and you with children's ministries you've been working with the alpha generation all week and didn't even know that yes. they were the alpha generation yes i had no idea that they were alpha generation um as the youth director of the conference i'm tasked to work with primarily generation z and the oldest people of the alpha generation and i minister to people all the way up to generation x um i am a generation x youth director so as you can see i'm youthful but i'm no longer young anymore okay and baby boomers are moving off this off the scene if you are 58 years old or older all of you will be eligible for retirement in the next seven years if you're a baby boomer every baby boomer will be in retirement age in the next seven years if you're watching today what generation are you in i'm very interested for you in the chat to write down what generation you're in pastor new bill says he's team millennial and a lot of our pastors are team millennial now in south atlantic conference and teresa you can attest to this they're either millennials or they're baby boomers okay there's not a lot of me left in between gen x pastors i don't have a lot of peers uh, anymore so i want to know where you are where do you fall quenisha hicks says she is a millennial the church of today uh, isaiah says he's gen x nicole gen x uh sister red millennial millennial look at all these people coming in look at all these people look at this rosemary graham she says she's booming there you go <laughs> a baby boomer all right sister gordon is booming baby boomer bro watkins is gen x <laughs> yes he is all right same generation my brother all right other people are coming in danita roy says millennial shayla parker generation x shayla i need to see that driver's license i don't know about that okay so let me see that driver's license april green is a millennial and and listen april green if you would have paid me i'd say you were gen z i thought you were much younger but i have memories of you being a lot younger and now you are in the millennial group brother hendrix gen x and this is a married couple but brother hendrix you robbed the cradle and went and got you a millennial with sister hendrix okay sister Devereaux is gen x so on the line right now we have a mix of um and Tony Charity is alpha generation. Okay. Charity Khalees, one of the smartest little kids I know, too. All right. One of the smartest little kids I know. Rosemary Blevins, I'm heading for three scores and 10. So, what is that? That's, <laughs> that, that's called the blessed generation. Okay. That's called the, the golden platinum generation. You just blessed, sister, because God says you've been doing something right. Pastor Scott is generation x virginia brown generation x uh my uh my daughter says she's gen z checking in under my wife's name okay april green thinks she's old now uh bro hendrix i'm glad you're laughing <laughs> i'm glad you're laughing because he said you know what i did good i i robbed from the millennials that's what i did and your pastor's over here laughing at you but it's important for us to see how the generations break down because these are the people in your church when you start talking about young people in your church you're really only talking about the bottom end of generation z and the alpha generation oh i like this brother mclean says he's 86 years old brother that's not generation x that's generation xx and we thank god that uh you're here with us to give us your wisdom and insight so you know oftentimes when we talk about young people in the church we're only talking about gen x and millennials because that's all we know but you can't see pastor washington as a young person no more you know i'm youthful i don't have that many gray hairs but i'm a middle-aged man i'm gen x okay millennials are up to 40 
two years old. Let me get this in your head. There are no teenage millennials. None. But brother uh, Garrick, you are Generation Z. Did you know that? I did not, actually. Okay. <laughs> I was so, just yeah. think, noticing, he's, isn't he the only Generation Z on this call? Uh, I have not seen anyone uh, say they're Generation Z. And Taryn is even wrong because she's Alpha Generation. But we have Generation X, a lot of millennials, but not a lot of gener. He's the only one that says he's Generation Z. Mm -hmm. So all them people flirting with you, ashamed of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> ashamed. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. So as we see y'all, and you can come back and screenshot that if you want, there's different generations in the church. Now, uh, Teresa, I'm not going to ask you to divulge where you fall, but when you see the different generations, let me ask you specifically, how should the older generations adjust to the newer generations? Yeah, I, I, it's very difficult for boomers to see Gen X as nothing more than babies. And Gen X is 57 years old now, the oldest. So how do you think older generations should adjust to younger generations? Uh, or do you mean as far as the church is concerned? Yes, please. Okay. Um, well, we have to know one thing about the generations that we just listed is, and one thing I admire about them is they're fearless and they don't like to be in a box. They don't like to be restricted with rules. And they don't mind speaking up and expressing themselves. They're not fearful of that. They're not fearful of if this is the way it's been done for a long time. And now we feel like this is a, a new time we feel like we can add something to this and do it a different way. They don't mind speaking up about it and doing something about it. So I love that about them. And I think that we should allow the young people to do just that. Um, let them break out of that box that we put them in and let them be who they are and let them get more involved in doing things in the church. And, and listen, have an open mind to the young people. Let's not close them out. Let's listen to them. You can answer this question, too, in the comments. What can older generations learn from younger generations? Give us that answer in the comments, everybody. Uh, Garrick, what do you think older generations can learn from the younger generations? Well, I was going to say something similar. Like, they, they just need to be, be willing to learn and listen, because a lot of people feel like, They've been around longer, so you can't tell them anything. But if 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 you like accept criticism and and help, like everybody gets involved in the church, and then it's not just one generation taking over the other. Mm -hmm. Do you? So are you saying that you don't think older generations take criticism well? I think <laughs> it's just us talking here. It's just us. So yeah, certain people, yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Would you agree with that, Teresa? Um, I I suppose that could be true with some people, yes. Absolutely. Peggy Roy says the older generation should teach and love the younger generations. Okay. Pass on what they have learned. Uh, uh share with the younger generations more information. Danita Roy says technology skills are and also being flexible, pushing change and being comfortable with it. So to answer the question, Danita Roy says older generations can learn technology from younger de generations. You got five year olds that can program your phone better than you. You know, That's true. Um, I think me being in the conference office, I think there's some people who've learned some things about technology from me, you know. And I think I've learned from younger generations. 
So, Danita, I think that is a, a good point. Uh, Pastor uh, Petit Holmes says the first thing to do is remember and put into practice Moshe, Joshua, Elijah, Elisha, Paul, Timothy models. These were older ministers who ministered to younger ministers. Watch this. They didn't see him as a threat. They didn't see him as adversaries or competition, but they poured into the next generation. And Sister Red agrees with that. Monty Newbill says one thing the older generation can learn from the younger generation is to be flexible. Now, I keep hearing this word flexibility over and over. Are we talking about doing splits? Are we talking about stretching? Are we talking about something else? Uh, uh, Garrick, when, when you hear people say older people need to be more flexible, wh what are we talking about? Uh, just like not, not, not stuck on one thing. Like you need to be able to, to branch out, do more than one thing, talk about more than one thing, like more than one type of music. It's okay to have old slow songs, not bad, seasoned slow songs uh, on one side, but at the same time, upbeat, more energetic music on the other side. Teresa, what's the difference between flexibility and compromise? Well, because um, some people say being flex, they'll say God changes not. He's the same today, yesterday and forevermore. So what's the difference between somebody being flexible to new things and compromise, in your opinion? I think being flexible means that you've got to be willing to do it. And, and and not be fearful to do it. I mean, try it. That's what he's basically saying. Be flexible. Flexible means you got to move. Yeah. You can't stay in that one spot, that one place, and the mm -hmm. same way of doing things. You got to mm -hmm. be flexible. You got to be more open and allow it. Before you knock it, try it. Yeah. And, and young people, here's a word from Elder Blevins. She's making it clear you can teach older generations something but be respectful you'll go a lot further if you're respectful don't be disrespectful all right don't be disrespectful that doesn't that's not going to get you anywhere make sure you should be you definitely should be respectful there's no limit in learning uh pastor kagia scott is an old man and he's saying today that he don't want to learn nothing now he just want to sing I've been redeemed. Listen, me and you are both old man, Pastor Scott, and we got to stick to the old foundations. Flexibility is having the ability to be diverse and not committed to one thing. The struggle is this. If you commit to something and it doesn't work, adjust and be flexible. That's a word, Pastor Newbill. That is definitely a word. Now, this is not a one. This is not a one way street. Let me hear this last comment from Danita. I believe the older generation is by the book. We as millennials and younger, or even some older, want to get out of the box, reach people by doing different things that may be taboo or forbidden by older members. We live in different times and we can't reach the youth the same way we did, wow, in the Stone Age. Stone ages. Wow, I didn't know we lived in the Stone Ages. Stone ages. <laughs> no shade though, wisdom and youth can be a powerful tool for kingdom work. Give me your response to that, Garrick. Uh I, I agree. Like you like say take AYS for example. You're not gonna reach a lot of young people by just sitting there talking to them. You need to provide some some games, maybe some games that, that you wouldn't play back in never mind. Not no. I'm not trying to call you old. Back back in the eighties, eighties, nineties, whatever. But like Wow, just, the eighties and nineties are old, Teresa. Wow, wow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Go ahead, girl. But just like be able to, yeah, just be able to, like, change, pretty much. Okay. Now this is not a one-way street. As we prepare the process of wrapping up, I'm gonna ask this question to my panelists and everyone watching. Older generations can learn from younger generations. But what can younger generations learn from older generations? All right. Teresa, you're part of an older generation. I'm part of an older generation. What can younger generations learn from us? Well, um, as far as the church is concerned, I think they sh one thing they can learn 
is commitment. Um, we live in a um, wow. society now where yeah. um, where um, commitment to excellence is important. And so, and we even go as far as to measure or give ourselves scores on our commitment to our job, to our relationships. Um, and so I think that we should add to that list, young people, um, commitment to your church. There are so many things in the church that you can get involved in, you can do for your church. And one thing is that if you will notice, and I'm sure you've noticed that you will have older people that have been in, had, had committed to the church and they're still in the church doing some of the same positions they did forever now some may frown on that but that is a sign of commitment mm. they committed to god a long time ago and they they do it did it for many many years and my um my point on those people is that commitment just commit yourself to your church add that to your uh list of excellence in your life and in your world your church add that to your commitment list and do something for your church that will bring joy to your life and you won't regret it what a word teresa that's that's some good stuff and i i want to echo that and i'm gonna be a little bit more blunt um millennials gen z alpha generation y'all quit y'all quit you, you have brilliant ideas but when the rubber meets the road and when hard times come, I quit. When people don't pat you on the back enough, when 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 people aren't complimenting you enough, I'm burned out. I quit. And one thing that the younger generation can learn from the older generation is endurance. Not just commitment, but endurance. You're going to have to take something sometimes. You're going to have to push through some tough times everything is not going to be perfectly laid out for you mm -hmm. watch this you have to cry sometimes mm -hmm. there are going to be co-workers who don't like you all right and you're gonna have to deal with it there's gonna be a boss that's unfair to you and you can't pack up and run every time adversity comes you can't you can't um burnout is real don't get me wrong burnout is real but one of the things that the older generations did well, they had endurance. They would take something. We always talk about that old elder that's been in the church forever, but he's been there forever. He's seen things come and go, and he helped hold the church together and held on. Older generations can learn a lot from uh, younger generations. We've brought up technology and being flexible, but younger generations can learn from older generations too. Garrick, I'd love to get your perspective on this. Um, and then we're gonna go to some of the comments. Garrick, what can young people learn from older people when it comes to the church? I, I think one really important one is respect, like respect for God, people around you, your parents, your girlfriend or boyfriend. It's just a lot of people, they treat people bad because they haven't learned how, how to respect somebody. Yeah, respect, respect. That's and, and that goes with the fear of God. You know, I grew up in a time, and Teresa, you remember this, and may, some of y'all may remember this at church, talking about respect and fear. You didn't walk in the pulpit. You didn't touch the communion table. Y'all remember those days? It, it was like this awe that came along with it mm -hmm. about being in church. You had to dress a certain way to sit on the program. OK, if your skirt was too little, they would put a shawl over your <laughs> over your legs. Um, you couldn't walk in and out of church anytime you wanted to. Uh, the older generation taught us a different level of respect, and that translated into how we dealt with one another, you know, and being respectful with one another. And I do think that goes a long way. And that's an astute observation. We're running out of time, so I want to get to the comments and then we will definitely uh, wrap up. Um, 
Quinesha says, just because my worship looks different doesn't mean my worship isn't real. That's a mouthful. Amen. Amen. Uh, Joy to Reed says, uh, kind of echo what I says. She said, Joletta read, she says, learn to be steady, patient, not quick to jump into things without thinking through it. It doesn't pay to be risky. Sometimes it's good to weigh things. OK, the pastor says reaching young people is evangelism. Evangelism must be contextual to bear good fruit. He's making a good point. You don't have to do things the way they've always been to give good fruit. OK, you can do new things to make a difference. I like what our Federation president, Quinesha Hicks, says, how to use the good old hymns in those dark times in your life. Let me put you on some game, young people. Learn the hymns. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but there's something that, that touches your soul about, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and tells me I am his own. There's something special about, pass me not, O gentle savior. Hear my humble cry. I love the modern songs, but Quenisha is right. During tough times, uh, those hymns will get you through. My beautiful wife says, faithfulness and stewardship. Tithing, for example, I hate to break news to everybody, but but tithing is a requirement of the Lord. It's a sin not to. Bible asks the question, will a man rob God? All right. And you don't want to rob God. You want to be faithful. And that's something the younger generation can learn. The youth, Pastor Newbill says the youth must learn how to res uh, respectfully acknowledge the work that the previous generations have laid for us. You can be balanced and honoring and adjusting as necessary, but disregarding their work is foolish on our part. What he's saying to the younger generations is don't throw the baby out with the bad boy. You can go outside the box without throwing away the box. <laughs> okay. There, there may be some good things left in the box. Okay. <laughs> that box may be useful. Okay. Yeah. When I went and pastored in Goldsboro, North Carolina and Parkstown, North Carolina, everybody in there was old enough to be my grandparent. Everybody. I was 20 something years old. I couldn't go in church talking about we're going to be out the box, out the box when the box did well for them. I had to respect the box. And if I showed respect for the box, they would let me go outside of the box sometimes. So it goes hand in hand. The point we're trying to get across, we need each other. We got to work together. The generations have to mix and go together. Let me get a few more of these comments. And panelists, you can jump in on any time. Shayla Parker says, the framework, and with that, they can build. So you, can, you don't have to tear it down. You can build off it. My predecessor was Pastor Patrick Carter, and before him, uh, uh, Pastor Brooks, and before him, Pastor Drake Barber, before him, Pastor Dale Howard. I stand on their shoulders. I build on their work. I didn't have to tear it down uh, to go far. Uh, Elder Watkins says the younger generation can learn how to deal with and work through adversity, and that God is your number one uh, resources. Oh my goodness. So many comments. So many comments. Let's get a few more. Uh, Peggy says they don't have the endurance because they haven't been given the foundation of Christ in training. We throw them into position and then get upset when they don't follow the rules that they were never taught. Amen. What do you say about that, Teresa? Um, I agree. All right. Rosemary Graham says, when you know your purpose, you have better resilience. When you know your purpose. Then Mark Bart Bartley says, as long as we not do not compromise the way works, the way marks that God has put in place in doing evangelism. That's where we get to compromise. OK, that we don't have to uh, compromise. Well, folks, there's been a lot of comments and I want you all to go to the uh, comments yourself and read through them. I'm going to read one more from my sister, Sherelle Bailey Troxler. Spending quality time intergenerational is also important. We treat each other better 
when we know one another. Garrick, what do you have to say about that? Uh, I feel like that that's that's important because I know a lot a lot of young people don't like spending time with the older generations because they're considered to be like boring and unenergetic. Not not my words, by the way, not my words. <laughs> uh, yeah, but if 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 we spent more time together, it would like like help us bond more. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, folks, we're going to bring this conversation to an end. This was a lively conversation. I think that it's important to summarize the biggest point that we made uh, today, and that is we need one another. If we're going to finish this work, we need one another. Our conference president is a baby boomer, but I need his wisdom. I need his leadership. Uh, I'm in Gen X and I'm in between uh, the boomers and the millennials. But if I don't lean on both, I will have no success. Jesus is coming again. And since he's coming again, the devil wants to divide us by generations. Okay. Hear me closely. No generation knows it all. Now, no. We can learn from each generation. There's something to be gleaned from being outside of the box. And there's something to glean from the box. And if we work together, we can make a big difference. We have to prepare for the next generation. We have to make room for them. But we don't have to do that by kicking the older generation out of the door. We have to make our churches places that are conducive to young people, but we don't have to do that by worshiping and compromising young people. We don't have to worship young people. Um, I love young people, but when we worship them, sometimes we mess up the box and we can't do that. I think we should love older people, middle-aged people and younger people because Jesus loves them all. Any final comments? Garrick, any last thing you want to say, sir? Uh, no. Just, just uh, everybody, like each generation needs to be willing to learn from the other and not think they're better than anybody else. All right. Any final comments from the representative from the millennials, Teresa Harrison, our millennial representative? <laughs> yes. Um, this is a great topic and it's much needed. And we all, as long as we live, we all can learn something from each and want each one of us and grow together. That's how we grow It's by learning from each other. So everybody keep up the good work. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, Sister Paige, I agree. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put on my prophetic hat right now. I believe a renaissance is all in the way. All this gloom and doom about the church. All of people saying people are leaving the church and people don't wanna go to church anymore. Well, the Bible prophesies that the gates of hell will not prevail against God's church. And the Bible also prophesies that in the last days, your young men and women are going to dream dreams. They're going to have visions. We're about to see the outpouring of the latter rain. And we're going to be getting dynamic power from God himself to close this work. The best days of the church are ahead. Now, the best days of the earth are over. We're entering a time of trouble like never before. But the best days of the church are ahead. You're going to see church triumphant. And I can't wait till Jesus cracks the sky. And one day together, we're going to put on our robes, old and young, and tell the story how we made it over. I think it's on the way. I think the best days of God's last day church are on the way with the power of the latter rain. What a time that's going to be. And young and old are going to be a part of that. I want to thank you all for joining us today. Our, our conversation went a little long, but it was a good conversation. I want to specifically thank the great Teresa Harrison, my uh, administrative assistant in the office, uh, who's, who's, who's become a friend. And I thank God for her and all that she does. Garrick, thank you for stepping in today. Uh, yes. Chloe was not able to join us. But I'm very much so impressed with you, young man. And I see, I see great things in your future. 
great things in your future. Um, I'm asking everyone, join us tonight. Join us tonight for our worship service at 6 o'clock. We've been having a dynamic time in our worship service. Join us tonight. We're going to have great music uh, from Yamaka Lawton. Uh, Pastor John Newlove will be our co-host. And then on top of that, we're going to have a dynamic word from Pastor Leonard Newton. On these same channels, join us tonight for our worship service. Let me pray over you before we go. Father in heaven, thank you for our current events and Hot Topics Roundtable. Bless us as we leave this place and bring us back tonight for more of the South Atlantic Conference Youth and Young Adult Camp Meeting, Hope Beyond the Headlines, at 6 o'clock. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I love you all. God bless you all. It's our honor to serve you. Joy of my life to do it. Never forget, if God be for us, who can be against us? God bless you, everybody. Bye.